Hello there, foodies. In this episode, we are back in Whistler, exploring even more of its food scene and showing you some of the fun things to do if you're wanting to experience the great outdoors during summertime in British Columbia while having all of the amenities at your doorstep. For breakfast, we recommend a stop at Purebred Bakery for their famous selection of baked treats. But because it is usually so busy with a line out the door, we opted for room service filling up on oatmeal and coffee before hopping onto our bikes and hitting the trails. Let me tell you, it is so freeing to just get on a bike and go, not really having a particular destination. The views and trails through the surrounding temporal rainforest make for a great riding experience. We stopped often to capture scenes of alpine lakes being fed by encompassing mountainscapes. We are the we are the more than we have the You're not alone. You're welcome After about 20 kilometers of biking from Whistler Village, we found lunch at one of the most popular patios in Whistler. Nicholas North's Table 19 is named the best patio in Whistler with views of Green Lake and a stunning mountain range in the background. We fueled up here and then headed back to Whistler for more foodie adventures. Alternatively, if you headed down the valley trail instead of north towards Green Lake, you would run into what we believe is the second best patio in Whistler at Nita Lake Lodge. Overlooking Nita Lake, nestled in between Alta and Alpha Lake, it's an equally gorgeous trail with delicious food ahead. We loved this area as an alternative to Whistler Village because it is on a small lake with plenty of activities surrounding the property, from hiking to supporting, all in one spot. We all agreed we would stay here next time on our trip to Whistler. One of the reasons we try to make it to Whistler each year is because my mom loves to go for her birthday. So this year we requested Barefoot Bistro do something special for her. We were sat at the chef's table with a view of the kitchen. What awaited my mom in the basement was a pop of excitement she will not soon forget. One of the most unique things to do in Whistler is visit the Barefoot Bistro's wine cellar. An underground parking garage turns cellar home to about 16,000 bottles of wine. This is British Columbia's largest restaurant wine cellar collection. Our host treated us to a fascinating history of champagne savoring involving Napoleon, tips on how to chill the wine properly before savoring for greater success, as well as unique items to use to savor champagne or sparkling wine. Let's listen in before he reveals our mom's surprise. Just remove that cage, and right where that seam ends is arguably the weakest part of the bottle, their Achilles heel. If anything else, it's going to be our focal point where we're going to strike to compromise the bottle's integrity. The instrument we're going to choose to do so is called the champagne saber. Looks like a big, sharp, menacing knife. It is not. It's completely dull. Okay. Its shape is all based on the historical significance I just shared with you. If you're going to use something really sharp, do so very carefully. And if your knives are as expensive as mine are at home, use the back of them and not the front. You'll only damage your steel. As you've mentioned, you use the shovel. I've seen them with skis, snowboards, high heel shoes, golf clubs. <laughs> My personal favorite, black titanium Amex card. <laughs> We've also used the bottom of a champagne flute without breaking the glass most of the time. <laughs> Having said that, this is the best thing I've ever really used. This is what we're going to use today. Because I'm right-handed, comfortably and confidently with my left, I hold this. I like my small finger underneath the pump, three fingers in the back, and my thumb on top of that seam. Take my instrument, and I've opened out the shoulders of the bottle like so. And the reason I'm doing this is to demonstrate to all of you how relaxed I am. <laughs> Everything about me is relaxed. Okay, the blade is blurry to the eye, handle shaking in my hand, my elbows low, my shoulders are loose. We're going dancing, not boxing. It's not an aggressive motion. Then on three, I want you to slide it up that seam, strike right at the bottom part of the bottle where that cage once was attached, and follow through like you're tossing a frisbee at a picnic, swinging a golf club, tennis racket, whatever sport you want. 
Our target is the barefoot bistro batter here. I like staring at my target. The reason being, if you stare at the top, you don't have the same follow through as when you're looking away. When you look away, you're making that contact, you follow through, like tossing that frisbee, stare at your target. Um, to use Bruce Lee's analogy, when he's talking about point of contact, he always said, get two inches past. Always past. Track and field, you're looking past the finish line. Keep that kind of philosophy in mind. You want a nice fluid motion, pop. In truth, the bottle wants to pop. We're just encouraging it. Who's up this time? It's uh, her birthday, so. I'm going to use that as a guy that's runway, kind of on the shoulder, sometimes it's easier. Now, you want to have equal parts of steel. You want equal parts of steel on either side of the wall, holding and keeping the blade at an angle where you have the most surface contact and metal weight glass. Common mistakes are rolling the blade. You know, one big mistake is taking it off the bottle altogether. Without striking the top now, don't worry about my hands. Show your form like I showed you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See how you're nice and loose? Okay. And staring here on three, you're going to make that contact and make sure the blade goes all the way through. Ready? One, two. Three. Woo! <laughs> Bistro, the chef's menu is a fixed menu consisting of seasonal dishes like scallops, venison, halibut, octopus, and decadent foie gras, all plated artfully. The view of the kitchen makes for an exciting evening as you watch them skillfully curate each plate. We finished with ice cream made tableside and served in metallic martini glasses adorned with anything you could ask for to top your ice cream sundae. It was a magical evening that made my mom's birthday very special. Thank you, Barefoot Bistro. Now it's nightfall, and if you're still looking to satisfy your cravings of the outdoors while in Whistler, then be sure to check out Valia Lumina by The Adventure Group. This night hike experience unfolds over 45 minutes with dazzling lights illuminating your trail. We added the bus service from Whistler Village while booking our tickets online. It conveniently took us there and back without any worry, 13 minutes one way. This night hike is a spectacle for all ages, but there are steps, uneven terrain and trails that could make it difficult to hike for some. But in general for us, it was a lovely hike. Walk your own pace and stop to enjoy the storyline and marvel at the lights placed throughout the forest. We got back just a bit before the bus arrived so we could enjoy some chamomile tea and roasted marshmallows over the fire. If you found this video at all helpful, please subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos to help our channel grow. Until next time, foodies, thanks for watching.